Welcome to the new episode of the Vintage Kitchen. This week I'm going to be making Old English Butterscotch. A boy was walking his bumblebee He tied it to a string The sky was lit up with violet light A bird began to sing A song of sixpence ingredients you need are one pound or 450 grams of raw sugar and if it's not called raw sugar in the country that you live in I'm going to give you a few of the other names that it has down in the video description so if you're watching this video embedded on a website go on over to YouTube check out the description and you'll find out what it's called there you'll need three quarters of a US cup or 180 mils of plain water a pinch of cream of tartar or one teaspoon of plain white vinegar. Four ounces or 120 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted butter but you can use salted butter. They're both fine. There's so much sugar in this recipe that the salted butter really won't make that much of a difference. You'll also need four tablespoons of cream. Now they're 15 ml tablespoons because that's the standard everywhere but Australia. So if you're using Australian tablespoons, the 20 ml ones, that's just three tablespoons. And you'll need a candy thermometer as well. Start by lining a baking sheet with some foil and then spray that with some cooking oil. If you don't have spray oil then use a little pastry brush and brush it over with some oil but don't use olive oil because the flavour is too strong. Any canola or vegetable oil should be fine. Start by pouring your sugar and water in a saucepan over a very low heat. And completely dissolve the sugar in the water. When I first tested this recipe, there's a typo in my recipe book and it says to use one tablespoon of water where it should say to use one teacup and I can't tell you how quickly that burnt once I started cooking. It was a complete disaster. Went a lovely shade of black and made my kitchen smell disgusting. Keep stirring until the sugar is completely dissolved but once it starts to simmer, stop stirring straight away. If you stir boiling sugar, it will crystallize and turn back into grains of sugar and you don't want to do that. So I'm just going to bring this to the boil and then I'll come back and show you how to stop the crystallization so that you can stir it. A very simple little trick. My mix is starting to boil so I'm going to throw in a pinch of cream of tartar or you can add a teaspoon of white vinegar and what this does is it adds some acid and that will allow you to stir it later on once it's started boiling. If you add acid to a sugar syrup it won't grain or it will help it to stop going grainy when you stir it after it has boiled. So if you actually want it to go grainy like we did in uh, when I made the peppermint and coffee creams then you don't add acid but if you want to be able to stir it later on after it's boiled add a little bit of acid. Modern recipes have you add glucose syrup, corn syrup, that sort of thing to stop it graining. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is just add a tiny bit of something acidic. Some recipes say lemon juice. So you could add lemon juice. I haven't tried that. The, um, the boiled sweets 
that we used to make when I was in high school for fundraising. They always had a teaspoon of white vinegar in them. We didn't know what we were doing and they always turned out right. I'm now going to put my candy thermometer in there and I'm going to boil it until it reaches the hard crack stage which is 150 degrees Celsius or 302 degrees Fahrenheit. So put your thermometer in and then just leave it to boil for as long as it takes to reach that temperature. You can see that that syrup expands quite a lot while it's cooking. So use quite a large saucepan much bigger than you think you might need. So I'm going to leave this boiling and come back and show you how to finish it off once it reaches the right temperature. Okay we're up to 302 degrees. Now that's taken about 20 minutes. My original recipe says to cook for half an hour so if you don't have a thermometer Boil it gently for half an hour and you're bound to have gotten up to the right temperature. Be very careful with what you do with the thermometer when you take it out. Don't put it in anything plastic or it will melt. I'm going to turn the heat off. Once it stops boiling, add the butter very carefully. You don't want to splash that syrup up onto your hands. and add the cream and stir that in. Stir gently but don't stir too slowly. You don't want that syrup to go hard. Now this is the stage where that cream of tartar or vinegar that you added earlier on will stop it from going grainy. Keep mixing that in. Might take a little while. It starts to thicken up as it cools down. Now give that one last stir and pour it into your prepared tray. This is extremely hot. So you don't want to go tasting it or even touching it at this stage. Try and tip it out to the edges before it starts to cool too much. Now leave that until it starts to set and then score some lines in it for where you want to cut it apart later on. This is not as hard as toffees that don't use cream so it won't be difficult to cut up if you let it set first. But it will be more brittle and more likely to break into pieces rather than squares. Now I'm going to let that cool completely and set and then I'll let you know how it tastes. There's my finished butterscotch straight from the fridge. It's rich, it's creamy, it's buttery, it is nothing like the modern chewy rubbish that you buy today. So that's how you make Old English style butterscotch, 1930s style. This recipe makes enough for gift giving, for a party. You could crumble it on top of ice cream or use it to make a butterscotch ice cream that would be great. You could also dip it into chocolate. If you want to give it as a gift, wrap it in coloured foil or wax paper and it will keep in an airtight tin.
just donate it all yourself. <laughs>